Redeem your image, Middle Belt and Southern leaders tell the Nigerian Senate. And the federal government bothers only about oil pipelines in the Niger Delta, says environmental activist Nimmo Basi. How true? We'll get to find out because this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cole. The Nigerian Senate has been advised by the Southern and uh, Middle Belt Alliance to redeem its already battered image using the opportunity of the Conference Committee on Electoral Act to vote in favour of electronic transmission of election results. The Senate President Ahmed Lawan had set up a Conference Committee of the Senate which would meet with the House of Representatives team to resolve the impasse uh, on the electronic transmission of election results. The Senate leader Abdullahi Yahya, who would lead the committee, also is in uh, includes the senators Kabiru Gaya, who's of the Northwest, Ajibola Bashiru Southwest, Danju Magoje of Northeast, and others. Well, to break this down, um, Father, we have joining us Tamano Williams, he is a legal practitioner, um, Olawale Okunui, Director General Intervention Movement, NIM, and Olaleko Ige, he is a social commentator. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for uh, viewing. Great. I'm going to start with you, Barista Tamano, because this, this is a legislative matter. And every Nigerian, even those who are not as educated as you and I, uh, understand that there has been a, 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 some form of a, um, a stop or, let's say, an elephant in the room in terms of, uh, you know, the major issues that should be uh, addressed in the Electoral Act bill that is uh, undergoing amendment. Now, it, there was a huge outcry as to the fact that um, there was some bogusness around the electronic um, transmission of results in that particular document. The first was that um, the National Assembly wasn't certain if this was possible in the first instance. And then there was a, a second where the INEC was asked to liaise with the NCC for, to see if this was possible. And INEC has come out, um, time without number, to say, well, we have done this, we can do this, it's not a problem, and we can handle it. We do not need the NCC to hold our hands. But then the National Assembly went on recession. They're back. We still haven't heard anything, apart from now that the Senate is uh, putting together a committee. Um, do you see this committee addressing the issues, the major issues that Nigerians are most interested in, in that amendment act? Well, uh, the first issue is that when you talk of law, or when you look at, when you consider law as a phenomenon or as a social guide, it's supposed to reflect basically the values and aspirations of the people. That is why if you look, if you're a Christian in the Bible, God told Adam, Thou shalt not eat that fruit. The fruit itself was not bad, was not wrong. But for God, it was a law that that fruit should not be eaten. Now, if we come back to uh, the, the point in issue, the issue of transmission of election results is what people desire. But whether that desire is practicable, whether it is the best at this point, and whether technically it can be done, these are completely different issues. But for us, my focus and uh, what I want to happen is that whatever they desire, whatever they want to do in terms of the conference committee will be a function of law, a function of policy, and a, a function of what some persons feel is their best interest. So in summary, the Senate and the House of Reps will do whatever their principals want them to do. Their main consideration, from what I have known, and from what history has taught us, has not been whether this particular piece of law is, at this point, the best for the people. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I want debate. to take you up on something. Did you say, I, I'm not certain I heard that right, did you say that they're going to do what their principles want them to do? Who are their principles? Because if you ask me, we should be the people that you're referring to. These people are there representing us, except... The, the reverse is the case. Are they representing themselves? Now, the, the principle, the, the principle, there are, there are three categories of principles. The first is that every elected officer is supposed to come back to his constituency and then take their mandate, consult them. I'm from Okrika River State, and 
even in your own, in your own community. When last did you see your members of reps or senate come to say there will be a voting on electoral uh, uh, transmission, electoral can, by by uh, co transmission? What do you want us to do? So more often than not, they don't come to consult. So that's why I say that at the end of the day, there are political groups' interests that feel that to transmit the result electronically is not favorable to them. That is one group of principle. Others feel that, look, this is what is best for us to succeed. So, and then you have the people in the house themselves, among themselves, using this particular event as a tool for negotiation. So there are three categories of interest and principle. So I'm saying is that uh, if the, 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 the reps, the members are going to come back to consult us, you can surely see the reflection of the people's wish. But I fear that will not happen. Olalekon, this is interesting because uh, I have had this conversation when it first became news uh, and, and the imbroglio as to whether or not the issue of electronic transmission of results should be even brought into play. Now, we're in the 21st century. You get your monies. I mean, I'm sending you some money. Uh, I, I would obviously ask for your you know, uh, wire transfer details, and I would do that in a few seconds and you'd get it. Um, I mean, literally anything. I could send you an email and it would drop. Uh, you... Uh, if you are a teacher in a university, most of those results now are uploaded on the sites where people just go there and check. Why are we still going back and forth on this issue? And this is not even the biggest of it. We're not even asking that we start e-voting. We're only asking for the transmission of these results to be done immediately at the polling units so that we can reduce the level of election, uh, electoral fraud. Why are we still dragging on this matter? Well, I think I agree with what uh, Barrister Tamuno said. I think it's down to the people. Uh, the members of the National Assembly will need to come back home and talk to the people, ask the people, what is your opinion? What do you want me to do? You voted me into office, and what are you expect me, uh, expecting me to do? You know, on the floor of the House, should I vote in favor of electronic transmission of results or not? I think those are the basic factors we have to look at until we're able to answer all of these, we'll continue to go back and forth. For me, there's nothing spectacular in transmitting uh, results. We should be able to do that. We have the facility. We can um, enhance the facility that we have at the moment if they are not sufficient enough. We have probably all of, should I say 90% or 85% of Nigeria covered by the mobile te uh, telecommunications company in areas where we may find it difficult to transmit the results. I'm sure we can come up with certain measures that can ensure that, look, we transmit results online and real time. There's nothing spectacular. There's no rocket science about this. And that is what the majority of Nigerians want. Transmit results as soon as they are ready so that we reduce this level of manipulation, this idea of holding an um, INEC official hostage, or this idea of running away with um, materials for uh, the, the results sheet, and all of that. This will just be immediate. And that is exactly what we expect members of the Senate to be able to do, vote in favor of electronic transmission of results. Like lawyers will always say, you can't build something on nothing. Let's first of all achieve this idea of being able to transmit results electronically, then we can move to the next stage of having electronic voting. But the challenge here is that you and Barrister Tamano have already said that, look, the people are the ones to have the say, but the people here seem to be uh, not the ones who are not being paid attention to. Now, I also like to take your minds back to the fact that before this amendment took place, there were members asked to go back to their constituents to have town halls. We saw them, I think they were done in regions. And people, people came there um, with petitions, people came there with their ideas, people made demands. So I'm trying to understand, again, why, where are those demands? I remember we covered them as the media, we covered those meetings. Where are those demands? Why are those demands not implemented? Because if they were implemented, the kind of you know, blowback that the National Assembly is getting because of this uh, electronic transfer for results or transmission of results would not be there in the first place. So it takes me to the next question, which is accountability. Um, will we ever experience accountability if we have made some of our demands known? It's not that we're saying them in our bedrooms. Opportunities have been given. Even when these our leaders are not accessible, we, we give those opinions. But what is done with those ideas and opinions that we put out there? Well, I think it's left for us as a people, you know, until we make elections free 
fair and credible in Nigeria. Until we make the vote count, we continue to have people who will not be accountable to the people. Because if you say, look, did they really vote for me in the election? Am I accountable to them? You know, until we're able to change our leaders whenever we desire. And one of the best ways to be able to change our leaders whenever uh, we desire is the idea of transmitting the results electronically. Once we know, once leaders know, once politicians know, once those who hold these political forces know that these electorates can change them every four years. I'm sure a lot of them will begin to sit up. They will be able to take a lot of us seriously. Because at the moment, they feel, did they really vote for me? After I won the election by my own whims and caprices. So why should I be you know, responsible to them? So until we're able to get you know, ele our elections right, and it just not, it's not just about getting elections right, it's also to ensure that we, who are the electorate, do we even go out on election days how many of us even have the voters card? So it's not just sufficient enough to even mount the fact that, look, our representatives are not talking to us. Do we also go out on election day? Do we have the voters card? Do we vote rightly according to our conscience or we are influenced by the amount of money that we were able to make on election day? So it goes a whole lot back. It must start with us. We must be able to do things right. Perform our civic responsibility of being able to vote during the election ensuring that our votes count, ensure that the, vote, uh, the results are transmitted electronically. And once political office holders know that electorals now have the power in their hands to change their leaders every four years, they will begin to get things right and they begin to take us seriously. Mr. Tamano, again, um, I worry um, because when, you, when we keep saying, or you and Olalekon keep saying, well, um, until we, the people, begin to vote right, until we do this and that, um, until elections are made free, fair, and credible. I had, I had a 78-year-old, if I'm not mistaken, 72-year-old yesterday on this show, and, and all he kept saying was that he did not want to debate on politics, but that he wanted to talk about good governance. And I said, good governance cannot be necessarily separated from you know, the politics of it. We, we must have elections. We must have free, fair, and credible elections. And he said something that, that I, I'm still tinkering on, which is until we're ready to take the bullets, until we're ready to occupy, until we're ready. But I ask, will the same National Assembly, who is responsible for making these laws that would help us have free, fair, and credible elections, do it? In other, if they do it, that, that obviously does not, does that not mean that they're cutting their nose off to spite their face again? If we see them not doing this, how do we hold them responsible? Because the only way that we can go to get good governance is through the ballot. But if the system is rigged against us, the people, what other avenues can we employ to you know, be able to get these people to be accountable to us? Because we, on the other side, are more than a handful of them who are leading us. <coughs> the, the, our situation is there. We are in what we call political quagmire. A quagmire is like when you fall into a into a, a pit. You don't have any means of climbing up unless you have to put in extra effort. Now, uh, and let me tell you um, the three fundamental uh, alphabet. It's a free, fair, and credible. FFC. Now, what, where we are in Nigeria, our focus. We are talking about transmitting results electronically. Okay, but election essentially is not an event. Election is a process. So what, what they have... Apologies, we're having some distortions and uh, connection issues. Uh, but we're hopefully thinking that we could be able to have them back on. Um, Mr. Tamano Williams, can you hear me? Loud and clear. All right, let's, let's try this again. Go ahead. Okay, I'm saying that what these these guys have done is to take our attention away from the substantive issue, which is free, fair, and credible. F F C. Now, election to transmit is just an event, but election is a process, you know. And if the process does not start well at the beginning. We transmit the wrong thing. Let me bring it to a restaurant. The food that is served on the table is just a vent. But that food, if it's say, for example, uh, um, what's this food, uh, uh, a dikaiko, 
a lot of ingredients are in that uh, decal that makes it very sweet. Now, the first fundamental problem that makes our election not to be free, not to be fair, not to be credible, is not transmission. It is the political culture of the Nigerian man. So we have a wrong political culture. Now, um, for you and uh, Ige, you guys are journalists. You go to see the end, end result. You are not opportune to see the back room what happens. More often than not, before election day, you know, you see the impact of it when you see local government election. The results are 90% ready. Not that they've been written down already, but the outcome is predetermined because the, the, the electoral officers, return officers, coalition officers, they're all, in most cases, party men of one party, either party A or party B. So before they transmit, they will only collate that result that favors them. And the law says that whatever the return officer declares is going to stand, except a court of law you know, says otherwise. Now, when you appoint a man who, is, who doesn't have the character, integrity to become a head of an electoral body. Election has failed, though. If in a state you have an INEC commissioner who is on the payroll of a governor, election has failed. Now, when they come to recruit the ad hoc staff, in, in most cases, out of the 36 states, I can, I'm not sure of any state where 90% of the officers are not brought in by political leaders. You get. So, and on the day of the election, they are only going to Uh, I think we lost time another. Um, Olaleko, would you like to step in? Um, in, in? In keeping with what he's saying, many people have advocated for um, Nigerians to advocate for um, making these offices financially less attractive. But it takes me back to the question I asked earlier. How do we do it? Because it's the same guys that have to legislate on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's let Leko come in here, Barista Samano. We'll come back to okay. you. Okay. Yeah, in terms of making the office less attractive, I think it has to be a, a, a joint decision, really. It's not going to be the decision of just those who are in political offices and all of that. You probably have to do with a new set of rules, a new set of laws, you know, for everybody or anybody who will occupy a political office in Nigeria. But you can't rely on those who are currently holding offices to make such offices less attractive, except they are saying, look, we should go back to having an, uh, amendments to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, or we have a brand new constitution, you know, attractive, which I don't think it's possible at the moment. But what we need to have is to first and foremost be able to elect credible people into offices. And Barrister Tamino Williams was just talking about the processes that lead to an election. You know, we only see the end result on election day, but we do not see majority of what has gone on one month, two months, three months, even before the election. I'm sure you are aware that several INEP officials have been sent to prison or are currently facing courts in Nigeria for compromising the election for which they are meant to be an impartial umpire. So you begin to understand the processes that have gone on, you know, before the election. That's why I said, look, can we get to elect credible people into offices? And I said, look, the day Nigerians have the power, the electorate have the power to change their leaders every four years if they don't perform or if they have not done well in office, that is the day a lot of political office holders will begin to sit up. So uh, say, look, we should reduce the tax of offices may not be the appropriate thing to do at the moment. What we need in Nigeria is to have a credible electoral process. Once the electoral process is credible, then it means that we are at liberty to be able to choose the leaders we want. And so we, once we can choose the leaders we want, they now know that Nigerians have the power to change them every four years. So it means they are ready to perform even beyond their own expectation to satisfy the electorate so that they can come back into the office. So at the heart of Nigeria's progress towards any advancement, towards any development, towards any serious, you know, progress is credible election. Every country in the world that has been successful, that is progressive, has had the opportunity to be able to choose those that are credible and those who can perform in office. Mr. Tamino, back to you. Uh, and just as you said, as the, at the heart of this also, it's the people. 
We the people, I mean, because the electoral process cannot happen on its own. It's, it can't happen in isolation. People make the ele electoral process in itself. So you have INEC on the, ha on the one hand. Uh, you have um, the police on the other hand. You have the politicians and you have the voters. Um, and, and so whether it be INEC, whether it be the police, whether it be politicians, we're all human beings. We're all Nigerians. Is it safe to say that we're all part of the problem, the guys who take the bribes? the guys who allow the processes to be rigged, the ones who take the ballot boxes, because sometimes we make it look like it's just the guys who snatch the ballot boxes that are the bad guys. The guys who take the bribes and allow for these ballot boxes to be stuffed in the first instance, and even those of us who would sell our consciences because, you know, we're hungry, we couldn't be bothered, we want to leave for the now. How do we even, where do we even start to... Um, you know, clean this erosion of our mentalities as it is, because it looks like it's a deep-seated problem. Now, uh, if the, the, the solutions, uh, there are many. But the first point is that there must be some level of awareness that, look, the road we are going to will lead us to Amagido. You know, that you, 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 are, you are dead sure that if you continue like this in the next four years, whether you are a politician, you are a doctor, you are a pastor, even in your church, people cannot bring offering because they don't have any offering to bring to you. So it must get to that dire situation. But there are things that can be done simply. Now, have you ever asked where INEC prints their ballot papers? Do you know where they print them? Do you know who the contractor is? You know, what is the level of security mark on those papers? Hmm. But we have, we have said, we have demanded that on election day, the results when they get to every pooling uh, uh, unit. The agents have to sign on that result before you start collation, okay? And before that time, all the agents that are going to sign result, they already have their sample signatures in their party headquarters. So when I say maybe I vote in pooling unit one in Okreka, my agent signs my result, the result that they're going to use in collating. If you swap it, if you change it, at the point of uploading, will object. So that result will be, will be uploaded as result objected for being uploaded. Mm. So before you can collate that result, you must clear, confirm that the signatures on it have been issued, you know, is that of the proper agents. I can tell you, all the political parties will not accept that process. You know why? It's going to shoot them in the foot. Now, the second point is this. You know that in every police unit, there is a, you know, a number of persons who are registered, no, not uh, registered in that place. Now, when you do accreditation, wherever the voting exceeds the number accredited, that result is cancelled automatically. So you don't need to go to court. But in our case now, you have had cases whereby those that are accredited were 50, but the return is 50,000 uh, 50, persons. They said because it has been announced by the return officer, let it go through. Then the last one, which is very fundamental, is that when you are eventually proven to have cheated in an election and you were voted into you occupied office, every cobalt you have earned from the day you assume office till when you leave, you refund it. So there is an inbuilt you know, penal measure. So the moment they get you, they find you that look, you actually came through a real process. You lose everything. But under the current law, if you serve three years or four years and they say the uh, election was wrong, that you, you are wrongly declared, you still keep your property, your, your benefit and all that. So the point is that we need to be more innovative eh? and not just the fact that uh, let's transmit. What are you transmitting? The garbage you are transmitting or the one that was prepared in the house you are transmitting or the one that was even uploaded earlier. So mm. I submit that, look, our political values are bad. Mm. That is why even if you bring a pastor to become an INEC, INEC commissioner, he will be inundated with overpower. Mm. So there has to be a great movement to change the, the, particular, the trend now. Wow. And on the, on, on the last note, um, Olaleko, um, he talks about orientation, that we need to have a reorientation of sorts and a, a change of mindsets. But do we wait for the NOA? Do we wait for um, political parties to teach us voter education? Or do we just wait for the media? What about the conversations we're having on our dinner tables? What conversations are we having in those small gatherings? Shouldn't it start from there? Because we seem to always, you know, jettison responsibilities and leave them at the feet of politicians, these same ones that we're complaining about, and mostly government. Well, I'm sure you know that one of the 
core responsibilities of a political party is also uh, enlightenment, is education, Definitely. is orientation. That's one of the core functions of political parties. And you know, uh, Barrister Tamuna Williams mentioned a lot of factors. You also have to, have to look at leadership recruitment by these political parties. You know, in very decent societies, you know, it is the responsibility of the party to look for the best brains, you know, to join their party. How do we recruit leadership even in political parties? You know, these are some of the basic factors that affect the general election. When a political party teaches its members that, look, it doesn't matter whether you vote on election day or not, our party is going to win. Or it doesn't matter whether you contest the primaries or not, you're already the candidate of the party. So mm -hmm. how does the party, you know, preach beyond its own confines and want to preach to the outside world, you know? That's why political parties should be strictly based on subscription. Mm. Political parties must ensure that every member of that party contributes to the welfare of that political party. It's not just for one person or two persons or three persons or five persons to come together and hijack, you know, the financial position of the party and turn themselves to money back. It automatically mm. means that they don't have regards for the rest of members of the party. Mm. But if every member, let's say party A, has one million members, and they contribute one naira every month. That's one million naira every month. So it means that every member of that party would have a say in what happens in that political party. And by extension, we are trying to grow a democratic culture by saying that, look, if party A wants to elect a governor, and it has 500,000 registered members in that particular state. Why can't 500,000 registered members vote for the candidate of uh, the governorship candidate of that party online? Can mm. political parties begin to encourage their members, teach their members how to do electronic voting? I'm sure you know that political parties are major drivers of democratic culture. So you can imagine party A as means, ways and means of doing electronic voting for its members across Nigeria. Don't you think it would be easier for that political party well, to preach it to the rest of Nigeria to say, look, in our party, we have been doing electronic voting for the past two, three, four, five, ten years, and it has favored us. Why can't we extend this to the national level or widespread level, you know, across Nigeria? So okay. it's the responsibility of the party to ensure there is enlightenment, to ensure there is education, to ensure okay. there is orientation. And because uh, they must also look for people who are credible to uh, to contest All on right. the platform of such political party. Well, we want to thank uh, Tamano Williams, a legal practitioner, um, and we also want to thank Olali Kon Ige, who's a social commentator. Unfortunately, we were not able to get our other guests online for connection reasons. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much, Bridget. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return... We will discuss the state of the environment in the Niger Delta. Yes, we have to. But then, of course, there's politicking to it. We'll be back shortly.